Rowing has been described as the ultimate team sport and a pain contest. How would you describe it? I, I would say that's pretty fair. Um, I would say it's definitely it's a physical sport and a mental sport uh, because when you say pain contest, uh, maybe most people don't understand that because you row and I row. Uh, we're self-inflicting ourselves with the pain, and we know it's coming, and when it comes, we have to go harder. Uh, so you're, you're pushing your, your body to the limit and to the limits to where your body's telling your brain to stop because it hurts, but your, your, your brain, your, your mentally, you have to keep going because you, you want to win because the person who pushes harder. So a pain contest is very fair. I would say maybe like there's a lot of mental, mental uh, determination in the sport because uh, during an erg test or a rowing race, everybody's in pain and it's just who can go harder for longer. Um, sometimes you can mentally, mentally bridge that gap uh, between slowing down and just going as hard as you can. Um, what, we, what was the first way you described it? Uh, the ultimate team sport. You're only as good as you make your teammates. Uh, in rowing, everybody has the same position, essentially. There's no, there's no left fielder or right fielder. There's no wide receiver or quarterback. Everybody's a rower in the boat, and everybody has to move together the same, uh, especially at our level. Uh, very, very fine details of our stroke in terms of the way that we move will dictate whether we're successful or not. And personally, I, I race three times a year, right? I train 365 days a year. Uh, so it's, it, it's primarily just to unify the people in the boat, to, to build that, that teamwork and that camaraderie. That So when it gets tough in, in the races and we're towards the end of the race and we're really tired and you can't see or think or you don't know where you are, that the, this, the, the cohesiveness you've, you've built with your teammates in the boats every day, just stick, you stick together and hopefully cross the line first. When you get onto the course and the horn sounds, what is going through your mind from the start line to the finish? So we, um, so we practice, right? We practice all these, this technique. You know, we do legs only, leg swing, outside arm, inside arm, kind of different practicing how, our skills. And the idea is to do all of that in practice, though, so that when you race, you don't have to think about that stuff. You don't have to think about your catch. You don't have to think about putting your legs down. You have to think about finishing clean or whatever it is. Um, that's the fun part. Racing is the fun part of the sport, at least for me. Uh, I'm here to race really hard and to win. That's why I love the sport. I love to put myself up against other people and know that hopefully, in the end, I can prove myself that I'm like a little tougher, a little better rower or racer or whatever it is. I just want to get the, end, the finish line first. Um, so racing, when the horn goes off, it's just go time. Just go as hard as you can for as long as you can. And the side by side, the people next to you, that's the fun part because you're jockeying for position and the, oh, we're seat down, a seat up, we got to go here. Um, that's just kind of like a natural primitive part of, of the person who you are. It's just like, let's just keep going hard. Like technically, everything's out the window and now it just turns into a tough guy contest. As an Olympic athlete, you are among the most elite athletes in the world. What kind of sacrifices have you had to make to get to this elitism? Oh, so I'm, a, I'm much older than you, probably around twice your age. Um, <laughs> and there, there's been a ton of sacrifices. Um, I started sport like you in high school. I rode, I liked, I liked my teammates, I liked racing. Uh, there's a race every weekend, it's sunny out, you know, there's barbecue afterwards, you know, it's fun. Uh, I, I wanted to keep doing it in college, I'm a fairly competitive person. And, um, raced really well in college and then after college I decided to start doing the national team. Um, I've been doing it for eight years since college. This is my eighth year. And the, the people who are my age who maybe haven't rode are, have done a lot of different things with their lives, primarily their careers. Um, I've been able to have part-time jobs or you know I rode for four years and through the London Olympics and then I took a year or two to myself and, and worked a little bit but I'm still kind of like behind the ball in terms of my career development. But I also agree to philosophy. I'll, I'll have, I have 70 more years after this where I can work and, and just develop a career. I can probably only row until next year or maybe a couple more years physically because you, know, you kind of just get older. So I've sacrificed my career. Um, I also live roughly 3,000 miles away from my wife. So we, um, we got married last summer and she's in medical school at USC. So she has to be there. Um, in Southern California, and we train primarily in Princeton. So for the past 18 months, we've been apart for a, a, a lot of it, which is not the easiest thing. So I, we, after the World Championships this summer, I uh, returned to Princeton late September, and then I didn't see her till Thanksgiving. 
So it was roughly two months between there. And that's, that's a big sacrifice. Fact, I'm a lucky guy here that she's, she's able to put up with me and being away because most, most wives get to spend every night or every day uh, with their husbands. Um, but she knows it's really important to me. And she's also doing something that's very, very important to her. And it also requires a, uh, a demanding schedule and a lot of focus for her own personal and career development. So th those are so those are a couple of the examples of the sacrifices you have to make. What does it feel like to compete for your country and have the entire country cheering you on? I think that's the most special part of the sport. Uh, you know, like there's not a lot of lot, not a lot of money. You know, we're not on ESPN. Uh, the rowing community knows who uh, maybe we are, uh, and you you younger, but not. It's not a mainstream sport, but the the opportunity to go ahead and race for the United States is the, it's it's why I, it's probably why I do it. Uh, going ahead to represent your country, and I was fortunate enough to go to the last Olympics, and it was awesome to wear the colors, to race in the colors, and do well in the colors, uh, to re just represent your country, and and um, that is the most important part. I, I if I don't know. If it wasn't for the Olympics, I obviously probably w I wouldn't be doing this this sport at this high of a level. Uh, but it's just my my love for competition and representing your country. Absolutely. Olympic gymnast Olga Corbett once said, "The ability to conquer oneself is the most precious of all things sports bestows." At what point do you yourself become an obstacle to conquer on your path to the Olympics? So I agree with her that it's 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 more it's personal. Like we have to drive ourselves. We have to push ourselves. Over, the, over each of whatever limit it is. You know, for me, it's, for us, it's better two case, right? Trying to trying to get better, trying to get stronger physically, trying to get better technically, um, trying to just push ourselves mentally. Uh, what am I going to have to do coming into this next Olympics to to get over? What what hurdles do I need to get over? Um, th I think they're they're simple and they're the same, uh, just at a higher level. I think you can do things at a high level, or you can do things at a high, high level. You can do things well, or you can do them really well. You know, we, we, when we train, it's like, you know, we're training, whatever we, is, is every stroke helping me to get a gold medal? And I need to go every practice to every stroke and focus on that to make sure that in the end, when I get to the Olympics, I have no regrets that I, you know, I took, you know, February was a bad month for me, or I had a couple bad tests and did it, you know, just making sure that every, practice, we go in to make sure that that's what we're trying to get out, that the goal is Olympic gold medal. Um, and that it takes, you're not going to win, you know, you don't win the Olympics in August in Rio. You win the Olympics today, you win the Olympics tomorrow, you, you won the, hopefully you did enough yesterday to win the Olympics. And the, the, uh, all those days added up will hopefully get you Olympic gold medal.